Hi, I'm Chef Arnold, and this is the Orange Flesh Sweet Potato. Oh yes, the Orange Flesh Sweet Potato. Maybe you've heard about other potatoes, maybe you've sampled other potatoes, but this is so very unique. And I'm inviting you now to join me in a culinary journey that will show you new and innovative ways of putting in the sweet potato into your ordinary dishes. What we have here, as you can see, is the sweet potato, orange flesh sweet potato, and we have the okra, okra or lady fingers. So the okra and the sweet potato combined with all these ingredients that are here on the table will give us a very nice masala. So join me. The journey starts now at this moment. <coughs> Cooking has never been that easy, but it's always very simple. So you might be wondering, why should you use the orange flesh sweet potato? Why not any other sweet potato? <clears throat> well, the orange flesh sweet potato, as you can see from the deep hue in the colors, is packed with beta carotene, and beta carotene is the precursor, the precursor to vitamin A, which is so good for you and for your health, including vitamin C and other antioxidants. And then when you combine it with the okra, as you know, the okra is full of minerals and it's one of the vegetables that are recommended for dietary challenges. If you're having a problem with digestion, uh, okra is full of mucilage, what is called mucilage, that makes it easy for you to digest and synthesize all the food that is that you're eating. So there we are with our sweet potatoes. So the next step, get some hot water. You only need a very little amount. We add a dash of salt. Just a tiny little bit amount because the sweet potato comes almost naturally seasoned. So we cover our cooking pot, give it a few minutes, we let the water boil so that we're able to just briefly blanch or, or pre-cook the potatoes and then we move on to the next step. Now the water, the water has boiled. It's time now to ease in the orange flesh sweet potatoes, as I've mentioned to you before, they only require very, very, very brief per boiling. Because of the nature of their contents, you don't want to end up with um, a mushy potato. You want to be able to feel the potato as you eat the okra, you can, you can pick out the potato. This is good and done. So we go on and drain it. <coughs> As you can see, it's looking very fresh. You can see the color, it's all there. Now we want to put in some vegetable oil. This is pure vegetable oil into this, to this pan so that we are able to, to prepare the okra or the lady fingers, if you may. So as the oil heats up, heats up, take the okra, just slice it lengthways. So 
there we are. Okra. Finally diced and ready to go. Now the next step is to generously spread this cornstarch. It's very affordable, it's available in our local markets, supermarkets or shops. You spread it so that it coats. Don't be afraid to use your hands. Your hands are clean. And now the oil is hot enough. Gently lower the okra. You can see it's turning brown now. It's taking a good color. So now okra is ready. We have to drain it on absorbent paper so that we can take away all the oil that is in it. So there you are. Nice and ready. So we set this aside. Now the hard stuff is done. The fun begins now from this moment. So now we prepare the, the masala sauce. Let's prepare the masala sauce. We need to put our saucepan on our heat sauce. You dice the onion. We need about two onions. Remember the ingredients I'm having here basically are very conservative estimates. I don't want to make it uh, too hot or to make it too spicy. But uh, in your own controlled environment, you're allowed. You're allowed to add in an extra dash of chili if you need more chili. You're allowed to add in uh, extra garam masala. You're allowed to add in extra okra seeds. You're allowed to add in extra cream. You can even substitute some ingredients. It depends on what ultimately will do it for you. So our pan is nice, hot. We need to put in the vegetable oil. The reason why I put all that vegetable oil so that the spices, the spice mixture can be able to cook in it. So we put in the cumin seeds. It's whole, it's not ground. You can hear them pop. And remember we're making the orange flesh, sweet potato and okra masala. You don't want them to burn. So at that point, introduce my onions. Well, you can see our onions now, they are they're sautéing. We don't want them to burn, but we want them to brown just a little bit. And while we're doing that, we need now to, to chop the tomatoes. Because they'll also make part of that masala sauce. gives you a sauce that is consistent, it's nice, it's smooth, it's very, very easy to handle. Need to add a dash of liquid. There the it's ginger and garlic. It's blended all together, ginger and garlic paste with a dash of vegetable oil. This is about uh, 50 grams of garam masala, so we are adding that now. This is paprika. The reason why we are putting the spices before we put uh, the tomatoes and the tomato paste is so that they are able, able to cook 
and they're able to cook, you're able to get the character. Every spice is unique, and that combination is what gives that, that character. So that is done. We need to add in now the tomato paste. The paste also needs to cook a little bit. Don't let it burn. Now we introduce, this is fresh, fresh tomatoes. Wow. Look at that. Now that sauce needs to simmer so that it's able to, to cook. Once the sauce has tempered, all the remaining oil comes to the surface. That is the only indication that your sauce is cooked and when you, you're, you're consuming it, it will not give you challenges in terms of digestion or gas in your system. We have not added chili, we had chili. There's chili, a dash of chili powder. The chili powder is basically to now wrap it off. We'll now add a dash of salt into it. And I'll now introduce our pre-cooked, the orange flesh, sweet potatoes, into the mix. This is the chili. It's just a slight touch of chili. We're putting it so that we're able to, to let it uh, marry with the rest of the flavors in this okra. And now the, the masala appears a bit thick, so we'll introduce some liquid just to make it a little bit light and allow it to, to soak into the orange flesh sweet potatoes so that they become part of that mixture. Here you are. So we simmer this for about for a few minutes. Now it's time to introduce the, the okra onto the orange flesh sweet potato okra masala. This is the okra we had pre-cooked. Just stir it into the masala mixture so that it becomes part. Part of the dish, and as you can see, the distribution of the okra and uh, the orange flesh sweet potato, the orange flesh sweet potato being the main item here, complemented by the okra. Then we add cream, this is cooking cream, just to give it a balance to all the spicy taste. You can even see the color has changed a little bit. It's more creamy. Now this is a coriander or denier. Also add part of it. Finally, after that long wait, the masala is now ready. As you can see, it's, uh, it's creamy. It's looking real, real nice. This orange flesh sweet potato masala is very rich in vitamin A and minerals, including the additional nutritional value I was talking about from adding the okra, the cream and all the other ingredients. So the orange flesh sweet potato masala is done, it's ready. You can eat it with the rice at home, you can pair it with chapatis, you can eat it with bread. We can have it as a meal on its own, so it's ready to go very nice and fresh. Mm -hmm.